it's not the type of thing we get in this sort of area at all. We follow three female police officers. Run down a bit. Please! Please! We're after the bad guys. Across their week of shifts. In the next 24 hours, we'll have him sat in our police cells. Bye, see you later. Frontline policing in Britain is changing. Come on, then. The percentage of women on the force has almost doubled in the last 20 years. Whoever's in that vehicle will be getting arrested. In West Yorkshire, there are now over 1,600 female police officers on duty today. Get your arm behind your back now! From immediate response... Get down here! ..to CSI. Obviously, you want to catch the people that have done this. From those just starting out... Drink some more tea. I advise it. ..to the decision-makers at the top. Morning, folks. Morning, boss. Thank you very much. A single shift... Got him. ..can be a matter of life... We're just waiting for another ambulance to come. Death. I can just see the male. He's sat on the edge of the tracks. And everything in between. There you go, Becky. Can you fit in there? You can get lost. <laughs> and every officer has their own way of dealing with the job. Oi! It's not a public toilet. Sorry. 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 Tired. And coping with the pressures it can bring back at home. Hi, Mum. Hi, love. You okay? Would you want to be a peace woman? No. <laughs> <laughs> How many robbers do you think I caught today? Uh, a thousand. A thousand robbers? <laughs> yeah. In Keithley today? <laughs> yeah. Sergeant Helen Chapman yeah. has a busy week of shifts ahead. Yeah, How many have you caught today? Nil. Daddy? Nil. 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 No. Mm. I was out with the dog. Her husband Mark is an officer on the force too. I'll try harder tomorrow. OK. OK. It's 6.40 a.m. Helen and her team have got an early start. Yeah, they're upstairs. Unhappy because they now can't come on this warrant. For the past year, officers in Keithley have been investigating a suspected heroin supplier 10 miles away in Bradford. We've come in early so we can get out and execute a warrant. The best time to do this warrant is first thing in the morning, where it's most likely that the person we're after will be at home. Well, this guy is what we suspect to be one level up from a street dealer, so he is in a position of control over our street dealer. The higher up they get in the chain, the less likely they are to even get their hands on the drugs. He'll be well aware of what evidence will get him convicted, so he would look to destroy his phone. So we need to get our hands on that. And if we get any drugs and money, even better. Uh, meet us at that petrol station if you want fun, uh, on our fraud. Helen's arranged for other units in Bradford to join them for backup. We're basically breaking somebody's home. There's fair potential that they could use violence on us, so we just need to be mindful of that and make sure they know who we are when we're going in. Hi Morning, guys. all. Where's the sergeant? I'm here. Oh, Sarge. You all right? Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you've heard of this chap before. We're not really expecting that there'll be large quantities of drugs there, but if there is, bonus. If he's trying to get rid of anything at all, it's going to be his mobile phone. Mobile phone is the thing that we want the most. Come on, we'll give it a go. you got to be in it to win it. I don't know what they're like, them garages, but we'll park up there. I left you enough room to get out. There's no doubt about it, it is a dangerous job. You don't know what you're going to. I don't think there's anybody who particularly wants to get arrested. You're taking somebody's liberty away from them and you've got to prepare for them to fight back. It's all in darkness. Good. Back at the station, PC Laura Gargett is also beginning her week of six 10-hour shifts. Two earlies, two lates and two nights. Alongside her role on immediate response, Laura mentors trainee officers, like 20-year-old Josh Pollard. West Yorkshire Police has invested 10 years in me, so I feel it's important to 
put some of them, that back in. And it's lovely to see the students when they start with me knowing nothing. And by the end of that 10 weeks, they've got enough confidence to be able to go out and do the very basics and then just watch them develop from there. It's been nine weeks since Josh was assigned to Laura. Oh, look at the colour of the sky. Isn't it pretty? That is pretty, yes. Laura's obviously one of the most experienced on the team. She's got over 10 years service in the police. So, yeah, she's a, she's a, a top copper. Oh, somebody's been in here with dirty feet. Shocking. Ten weeks in a, a great deal of time um, for this job to get your head around it. No situation's the same. Every job that you go to just blows your mind and you just think, what am I going to do here? This is their final week together, before Josh finds out if he's done enough to be signed off as a trainee and become a full PC. There we go. That's what we're after. Their first job of the day is to arrest a man suspected of assault after allegedly making threats on social media. We've checked the suspect on our system. We know that he's not got any warning markers. Um, however, we're aware that he's been involved in a crime that potentially involved a knife, so we need to be very wary that he's not going to tool himself up and do something silly to try and uh, evade us. I do definitely get nervous, but... At the end of the day, the public expect us to be fearless. Um, and we have got a job to do, so I just sort of have to put that to one side and get over it. You often find that if you talk to people in a respectful way, they don't get the heckles up quite as high. And I, I would rather deal with jobs smoothly um, than, than end up fighting with them. But if I end up fighting, it's not a fight you're ever going to win. I will always win. And I'm six foot 200 kilos. I don't even know how to tell you. Five, five foot three. Five three, right. And I'm still fairly sure that she'd have me in a fight. So knowing that she's by my side is uh, definitely confidence inspiring. It's only because I use dirty tricks. Well, yeah. I use dirty tricks. Given the risk of a difficult arrest, Laura will take the lead, but she's hoping Josh can bring the suspect in. It's just after 7 a.m. And over in Bradford, Helen and her team are outside the house of the suspected drug dealer. Please! 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 So what's this? It's... What is it? It's money. It's money? OK. And whilst she was in bed, she was fiddling round. I knew she was doing something, and it transpired. She was trying to tie this money up in her pyjama bottoms and hide it down the back of the bed. I wish I had this much under my bed. I guessed it about 5,000. It's a lot of money to have lying around in your house. So, yeah, it's good. No drugs have been found. But Helen hopes that the search may uncover more potentially incriminating evidence. Is that his keys? Yeah. Yeah, if, you're, if you've done it, yeah. Is there anything on here? Right. Okay. There's a fold on the side of the shop. I've been joking. Okay. There's a fold on the side of So, well, I'm the only one. I would take him in. You're under arrest on suspicion of conspiracy to supply class A drugs. Okay. All right. So you do not say. Oh, you're right. As the search continues, Helen's team discover another piece of potentially crucial evidence. Oh, there's another phone here under his pillow. Perfect. That's the one we're after. With drug dealing, they will use cheap throwaway phones that they can change regularly, so there's no evidence on them, and it's more difficult for us to trace. It'd be interesting to see what's on there.
In Keithley, PC Laura Gargett and trainee Josh Pollard... Hi, Emma, We need to come in. ..have arrived at the house of a man wanted for a violent assault. Do you know what this is about? Yeah. And do you know he's made allegations against you? Mm, well, what's he made? An allegation of assault. But he's been provoking me. I get that, and I know there's a bigger story. Do I have to come to tell us? Please. Oh, are you joking? I'm sorry. Is it Bradford? Yes, please. You can get dressed. My colleague's going to follow you upstairs while yeah, you get I'll have dressed. To come up there. Oh, make, make sure that you don't have anything right. on you that's going to land you in any more trouble. I remember once when I was a student with my, um, I was in my ten weeks and I went into an address and I was a real, I was a cow to somebody, and um, he got his back up and my tutor turned around to me and said there was afterwards and, and we got him into cells. He said, Do you know what? For the sake of ten, fifteen minutes and talking to him nicely. We wouldn't have got an aggressive bloke in return. He said, you were a so you need to learn to talk to people nicely. And that really stayed on board with me. Nothing in your pockets that's going to land you in any more dodie, is it? Cool. Have we met before? I don't know, probably. All right. We'll pop you in there. It's a tight fit. We'll go to Bradford and try and sort it out for you. All right. Are you ready? Yeah. Cracking. You just want to stand here, please. Thank you. Laura wants Josh to check the suspect into custody. On suspicion of uh, Section 18 assault, um, the allegation is that he has punch kicked and stamped on the victim. There's also a cut on the victim's hand, um, which is thought to have been by a knife. That's enough. Um, That's, enough. That's enough. The arrest is necessary. Okay. The rest is necessary for a prompt and effective investigation and to prevent the other harm to the victim. Josh is doing well. Perhaps possibly a little bit more confident. You know, he's, he's coming out of his ten weeks now and, and he just needs to hone in on that side of things. But, yeah, he'll make a good officer when he, uh, when he develops his skills a little bit more. So if you wouldn't mind handing it over to CID, please. What do they need? To tell them that you've locked him up. Make a significant statement. Across in Leeds, Inspector Julie Young is getting ready for her week of shifts. Here you go, Rory. One crumpet. <sighs> so what's everybody got on today? She lives with wife Amanda and their children, Rory and Lois. Supposed to marry died. Oh, oh well, happy. <laughs> Julie's got over 30 years' experience, oh having joined the police cadets at 16. After 12 years as a sergeant, she's just been promoted to inspector. I've recently changed from a more or less a Monday to Friday admin type role, which was mainly organising staffing and emails and covering gaps in, in staffing, um, to back on the front line. Uh, so I've been back a couple of weeks now um, and I'm absolutely loving it, getting back to doing police work rather than admin, being back on early, late and night, seeing some of the sort of excitement and the challenge that Frontline brings has been, uh, been really good. Julie's one of four female inspectors working out of Pudsey Station. Morning, folks. Bye. Thank you very much. Sit down, please. When she's on duty, she can be responsible for up to 30 officers. It's nice to see a nice full room this morning. It's been massively busy over the last few days. Certainly last night they were on about 102 logs at one point, uh, but they're down to 56 now. We've got um, quite a few domestic violence logs in though, so one of the priorities that will be given out to you guys today is just trying to get some of those resolved. And get a grip before lates come on tonight. So that's it. Give us a shout if you need anything. Thank you. Anything from the floor before we go? No? Thanks, everyone. <laughs> we'll, uh, see you later. As an inspector, Julie still spends time out on patrol. You never really know what your day is going to be like. Yeah, you never know what's going to happen. I suppose that's the beauty of being in the police, really, that, yes, it's challenging, yeah, it's difficult, but actually, you never know what your day is going to bring. I do have blonde moments you have to put with me. Today, she's joining PC Becky Thompson on immediate response. Yeah, so I joined five years before you were born. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the You're world... looking all right for it, though. Oh, thank <laughs> you. So, like, now, what's the percentage of women on your team? 
Uh, I think now we're about 50-50, if not more females than males. Whereas when I joined, you were, you were divided up so that there was one woman on each team. Yeah, my mum was an officer, my mum and dad, both of them. Oh, were they? So she joined oh, years yeah. and years ago. Yeah, my mum reminds me of times that she had to wear a skirt and she had a little handbag with a truncheon in it, walking yeah. up and down single crude, pitch black. Yeah. The world was a bit of a different place then. When I joined, one of my colleagues who was retired now, she's sort of a few years ahead of me, she, um, her next door neighbour reported to our discipline and complaints department for being a lesbian. And they came round and interviewed her, said, you're bringing the force into disrepute. And she's like, how dare she say something so horrible? And they're like, well, you know, be careful, because if you are doing that and you're having relationships with women, you know, you could get sacked and... Hey, would you be able to take an emergency, please? Just minutes after setting off, an emergency call comes through. Can you just give us a little rundown of it? Can you put the thing in for us? A man has been seen attacking his girlfriend. <laughs> They're one of the nearest units on patrol. A female victim who's been beaten up. He's made off on foot so far. He's got a cut mouth, a cut nose. I don't know if you know this couple very well, but they're a high-risk domestic couple. Yes, sir, that's Thank you. Last week, he was suspect for assault on the way through bleach all over. We were looking for this lad. He made off after the robbery. Put all units oh, on it, but we were unable to find him. He's got violence against police markers, just be aware. And what was the call that came in? He's got her hanging over a balcony. Oh, my God. So we've got a unit now built for the ambulance at all with a molly. No road place, Back in Keithley, fresh from their drugs arrest, Helen and her team are already mapping out their next operation. Over the last 14 years, Helen has held four different posts, from response to neighbourhood policing, as well as on organised crime and drugs teams. I've moved roles a fair few times, uh, which is great because I do get a bit bored after a few years. What I like to do is go into a role, learn how to do it, become quite good at it. I'm happy with that I can do it. I then want to challenge myself with something else. She only has a few shifts left this week before leaving to become a detective. Helen wants to leave Keithley on a high, and there's one long-running suspect she wants to bring in before she leaves. The aim of the game is to try and get this individual. She is going from a home address in Keithley over the tops to Bradford BD9, where she's uh, collecting Class A drugs. The aim is to get her stopped after she's uh, been to collect. She's on the ball and we've struggled to get her before. 12, 15 years, I've never got her. I've followed her before and she's been on to me straight away. The information we've had is that, depending on the format she's getting it in, she's either hiding it in a car or plugging it straight away. If it's in a Kinder Egg, she'll just straight up. So cuffs on, we're not taking eyes off them. If she stops, she's getting arrested yeah. for conspiracy t to supply Class A drugs. Yeah. Whoever's in that vehicle will be getting arrested. Yeah. Over in Leeds, one, Julie's arrived at the scene of a reported assault by a 17-year-old suspect on his girlfriend. The original call that we got was that it was like hanging her over that balcony there. There you go, Becky, can you fit in there? You can get lost. <laughs> He's fled the scene and is on the run. Just going to have a word with the neighbours, see if they've heard any noise. As an inspector, you're ultimately responsible for everything that everybody on your shift is doing. So the lady over there said he's just run through the gardens. I'm responsible for the safety and well-being of my officers, for their performance, to the service that you're giving to the public. Even though they might be off doing something miles away from where I am, ultimately the book stops with me. If I make a mistake, you know, potentially you're dealing with life and death situations. Uh, is his mum or his home address anywhere near here? He might be trying to make his way off there. I'll see if we've got any uh, details for mum. If we sort of explain to her that we're looking for him and he's, we think he's out somewhere in woods, she might be prepared to sort of ring him and persuade him to show himself to us. Three web club six at uh, Mum's address. Mm -hmm. Hi, kids. You all right? Uh, we think he's currently sort of hiding from us, like in gardens and woods. Will he answer the phone to you?
That's all right. That's why I get it. What other dresses have you got for him? Do you know where he goes? The man has now been on the run for 45 minutes. Eight three, we don't have any um, taser crew this morning. We have been monitoring um, all your last transmissions, so uh, we'll keep monitoring. Should he return, we'll have to try and provide some assistance. Luma, Victor Eight Three, that's much appreciated. Julia's shift ends in five hours, and she wants to catch him before clocking off. Oh, come on, let's find him. Did you do any reading last night? In Keithley... Just read a page while I'm getting my shoes on. Sergeant Helen Chapman has the rare chance to take her seven-year-old son, Freddie, to school before her next shift. I don't often get to bring him to school, so it's lovely. I do savour them days. Right, OK, let's stop. Look at the road. Is it clear to cross? The amount of parents' yeah. evenings, sports events... You try and take the time off for them, but you can't always guarantee them, but I have missed a lot. He knows what I do, and I don't think he fully comprehends what it entails. It's police for him, so that's catching robbers. He sees robbers as wearing black and white stripy tops with the swag bags. Do you have assembly this week? I wish they did. It'd be easier to catch them then. For Helen, working shifts has become a way of life. Seven on, three off, seven on, four off. But I can't remember the last time I didn't go into work on my days off. <laughs> Like, for at least for one of them days. I've kind of done that all the time since I've become a sergeant. Helen has one final drugs raid planned before she leaves Keithley at the end of the week. We in this one? For months, she and her right. team, including PC Charlie Smallwood... Right, let's do this. <laughs> ..have been investigating a suspected female drug dealer. Yeah, yeah. We're led by our communities, and in the vast majority of these, drugs are mentioned, whether it be we've got drug dealers driving around in really nice posh cars fast around our streets, I want you to target them, or I can see street-level dealers, you know, around the back, or I've got drug users in the flat next door to me. It's everywhere, so proactively targeting our drug dealers is what our communities want us to do. We're not going to win the war on it, but we're certainly doing what we can to um, disrupt these people. When you've got an operation running, you're weeks and weeks planning it, and then the night before, you don't sleep because you're thinking about all the different scenarios. Um, you just want to remain professional, get the job done right. Um, but it is exciting as well because we're after the bad guys. The unit have been given a tip-off that the suspected dealer is on her way to collect drugs from a supplier. When people are complaining about things, it's generally dog poo and drug dealing. Nobody wants to see it on the streets. Their plan is to catch the woman after she makes the pickup. I've got various different officers deployed in, in different areas, so we've hopefully covered all bases. All they can do now is wait. Should hopefully calm her down a bit. Silly sausage. Have you had a snack? No. Nothing. You hungry? Back at home, PC Laura Gargett is getting ready for a night shift. Hello. Tea time. <laughs> <laughs> it's a last chance to see her two girls before the night begins. Laura joined the police ten years ago when her daughter Charlotte was just seven years old. I'd always wanted to be a police officer from the age of 18. Um, I tried to apply for Greater Manchester Police and I was stumped by the fact I was five foot three. There was an inspector there who was from... So my mum kind of pushed me into nursing. Um, several years later, and a career in nursing after 20 years, and I was talking to a detective who was having an operation under local anaesthetic on a certain private area of his body. And I was just saying that I would have loved to be in a police officer. And he said, well, we're recruiting. I said, well, unfortunately, I'm too short. And he laughed and said, well, that went out about 10 years ago. Give it a go. Cut a long story short, 
they had me and uh, I've loved it ever since. Yeah, I like that one. I've actually got my eyes open. Yeah. Laura is still working as a PC ten years on. But she's now overseen the training of around seven officers. Today will be one of her final shifts with her latest, trainee Josh. Over in Bradford, after two hours, there's still no sign of Helen's drug dealer. Because she's not, she's not coming up here, is she? Hi there, it's Helen Chapman. I um, think we'll just stand this down for now, then. Yeah, no worries, Sarge. No worries if you want to head back to Keith, we will do. This woman is fast becoming the bane of my life. <laughs> yeah. Helen doesn't want to let this case go before she leaves, but with no sign of the suspected drug dealer so far, she may have little choice. You all right? For newly promoted inspector Julie Young, it's also been a frustrating day. She's led the hunt for a teenager accused of attacking his girlfriend. He's still at large. Hi, Mum! <laughs> at the end of a long shift, she's having a regular visit from Mum Pauline. Great. I'll just get that out of the way. Do you want a cushion? Oh, yes, please. Tap. How's work going? All right, it's good being back on my old team. But now we've got loads and loads of young ones. Mm. I think 80% of them were born after I joined police. But if they point that out, they talk themselves into a, a bad role for day if they, <laughs> if they gloat over that too much. <laughs> Working nights again is obviously a bit more of a... Trial. A trial at my age. What? <laughs> you know, but you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I suppose it's all relative. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Julie spent 12 years as a sergeant before being promoted to inspector. I suppose as a woman in the police, there has been some barriers to sort of promotion over the years. And I'm not saying it's all because of that, that it's taken me this long to get there. But um, over the past, I think certainly lots of women in the police have felt that they've got to be twice as good as men to kind of seek promotion. But I think now, certainly when I look around, even going back sort of two or three years in our force, out of about 25 um, inspectors that there were in Leeds, there was only three or four women. But now we're at least sort of 50%, so that's fantastic now. I think a lot of those barriers have gone, and it's great for the young women coming into the organisation now to see women in different ranks, because you do need those role models. Are you proud of her new role? Oh, not half. <laughs> because she's tried a few times. I think she could knock socks off them. Why Why has she not been promoted in them? She has been promoted. <laughs> Fantastic. Aww. Oh, for goodness <laughs> sake! <laughs> <laughs> well. Laura and Josh are about to set out on one of their last patrols together. After 10 weeks, Laura will have to tell bosses if she thinks her trainee, Josh, has done enough to go out on jobs alone. They're responding to a call-out from a pensioner who's just been subject to an attack on his home. Laura will be observing. Because you're coming very close to the end of your 10 weeks now, I'm going to let you deal with this in its entirety and try my hardest not to open my mouth, which, as you are aware, is quite difficult for me. So, at 72, what do you think you might need a lot of? Um, it just needs a good level of service from us. Level of reassurance. Needs to be looked after, yeah. yeah. If he's really shaken up, etc., then um, we can always make him a cup of tea as well. He will just keep him company for a little bit as well. Hello. Hello, sir. Is it Bernard? Right, okay. about there, first of all. Right. And I just jumped up and looked out. And I see who it was. And they were like that, out of the window, going like that. Right. And then, you know, fingers. And then they must have thrown a hammer and it hit the tiles there. Can you see the slates? He no. must have run down, got his hammer, come back. So he's thrown something first time, picked it up and thrown it again, has he? Yeah. And then it comes straight through. It's my top window, yeah. Right, OK. 
It's a nice area around here. It's not the type of thing we get in this sort of area at all. Can we uh, come inside, yeah? Yes, you can, yeah. Right. Excuse me if I'm waffling, but I'm, I'm still a bit shook up. Right, OK. And that's where I was sat, and then I, I jumped up at wind and just like, had a look out like that. Flying glass. It just got me finger. It's only a nick. You got just pen and brush? I'll, well, I'll clean, clean it up yeah. for you while you're chatting to my colleague. So, two Asian males. I'd say we're over six foot. Uh, right, OK. The dark claw in the boot. Just waving it just to, to let me know that he's seen me looking at him, if you like. Fine shards of glass on here as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Proper sprayed it everywhere, haven't they? And you've not had any problems with anyone? I know you said you've only been here two weeks. No, 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 no problem. Is there a bin outside? Them big green bins down, down there. Right, I shall go and find them. Um, right, no worries. Laura leaves Josh with the victim to take his statement. Yeah, I felt absolutely petrified being on my own. And I felt like I hadn't got a clue, to be honest. But once I started sort of speaking to him, going through what I'd heard Laura go through a couple of times before, it started to come out sort of better than I thought it would. Josh is doing really well. He's saying all the right things, asking all the right questions, and the gentleman. He's completely oblivious that Josh is quite a young in-service police officer, which is really reassuring, because Josh hasn't, uh, hasn't slipped at all. He's doing a, a brilliant, brilliant job, and I'm very proud of him, yeah. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get crime scene investigation to come out yeah. and have a look at that hammer and see yeah. if they've anything with any evidence on it. We're lucky that we're not dealing with anything more serious because that could have quite easily flown through the window and hit him in his head and we would have been dealing with life-changing or life-ending injuries. Right then, Bernard. Yeah, OK. Take care. Cheers. See you later. It's 10 p.m. And in Leeds, Inspector Julie Young is starting her night shift. They're still on the hunt for a teenager accused of assaulting his partner. And now the victim has been released from hospital. Hello, it's Inspector Young at Pulte Police Station. My officers are going to go out again tonight. Um, where do you think we might be able to get him? Yeah, what will he be doing now, do you reckon? Right. What sort of time does he come in when he's coming back from his burgling sprees? But do you think he's likely to go back to the flat? No. How come? Because he knows that we'll go there. Yeah. Right. OK. Get well soon. Hopefully we'll get him at some point, won't we? But if he makes contact with you, then... Yeah. All right. OK. See you later. Take care. As the inspector overseeing the night shift, Julie's responsible for over half of the Leeds area. What was that last one, Steve? 1494? There are currently 15 live cases. It's always kind of a bit of a juggling act as to risks and balances, really, and, and, and juggling staff to where, where we need them to go. So me as the inspector has to take a step back from actually being sort of in the middle of dealing with an incident so I can keep an overview on everything and think, well, well if I take some way from there, I need to put them in this position. You've got to have the trust in your sergeants that they know what they're doing so that um, I can concentrate on the ones that um, really need my focus as, inspe as the inspector. We're unlikely to find him until he is asleep somewhere when we can catch him unawares. So we've got lots of addresses to go look for him. I anticipate that in the next 24 hours that we'll have him sat in our police cells, no doubt. Keep the MPT, Helen Chapman speaking. Sergeant Helen Chapman is back on the trail of a suspected female drug dealer. Right. Do you know anything more about the jobs? It's just to see if you can check whether a vehicle has triggered any cameras this afternoon. It can be frustrating and it's a bit of patience you've got to learn um, to accept that, that you're going to have to sit and wait sometimes and things yeah. aren't going to go as you planned. Is that going, is that going towards people? But always get them in the end, eventually. All right, has it come back? They have a lead. Police cameras have picked up the suspect's car between Bradford and Keithley. That's brilliant. Thanks a lot for that. Cheers. Thanks. Bye. 
So vehicle has triggered going Bingley Bypass towards aircraft at 15.02. They believe she's on her way home after a drugs pickup. We need to be there now. Yeah, let's do it. Let's get his hands dirty. We get this. Good at that. Best case scenario is we find her with a bag of drugs in her pocket and her the mobile phone that she uses to conduct all her drug dealing enterprise on in her other pocket. It's not as good as catching them on the street doing it, but finding them with a load of drugs is exciting, it's good. Here we go. Two, two, five. got a drugs warrant here to search this premises. Have you got anything on you? Anything you shouldn't have, any drugs? Mm, okay. Okay. OK. Is there any more? No. Some more downsides to the cushion. Helen finds a plastic egg containing what they believe is heroin. Right, this time you're under arrest on suspicion of possession of possible drug. Uh, you don't have to say I think you could probably get about 60 wraps in there. Easy to hide. To have 60 in your possession, it's hard to explain as to why you've got them if you're trying to say you've got them for your own personal use. Helen needs conclusive evidence the woman is dealing drugs. That was in her hand, so that needs season. Oh, we've got a tick list. Yeah. Where was that found? Bedroom floor. It's a list containing the names of users who owe the suspect money. That's got a date on the top of it. Fantastic. I'm really happy with that. We've got the mobile phones found. We've recovered a quantity of drugs on an individual, so great. Doesn't get much better, really. I do the job because I love doing it. You realise the buzz you get from arresting suspects, chasing people, hunting them down, putting files in, going through to court and seeing people get sentenced and knowing that you've helped some victims of crime. Um, it really spurs you on to want to do more, do it again, do it better. Catching a criminal on the job, it's just a good feeling. In Keithley, for PC Laura Gargett and trainee Josh Pollard, it's the end of their 10 weeks training together. They've responded to 90 call-outs, made 12 arrests, and in the last week, Josh has led on the scene of several incidents. He knows enough to be able to cope with the basics, and the basics are he knows how to deal with an assault, he knows how to deal with a burglary, he knows how to deal with um, a theft from person or a theft from vehicle, he knows how to deal with a hate crime. The very basics of day-to-day -day policing that most of us see on the front line it's healthy to be nervous. The good thing is that we've got radios and we are literally a phone call away. So if he's struggling, all he has to do is shout up and we'll be there and we'll help him through. Um, but he, is, he knows what he's doing. Yeah. It's time for Josh to find out if he's done enough. Laura's given her recommendation, but the final decision rests with their sergeant. Hi, Sarge. How are you? It is. How are you Hi, Sarge, right? you all right? How's it going? All right. Julie's week of shifts is almost over, and she's ending it with some good news. Her teenager on the run has been found. So, yeah, one of our local supermarkets called when he went in there to get some food, and luckily he was so well contained by officers, had to eventually give himself up. He was arrested. But um, he's refused to come out of his cell for interview. It's Inspector, I just need to have a chat with you. Right, just move your blanket off your head so I can touch you. It's too All right. Right, how are you feeling in yourself? I'm not bothered to be about jail. You're not bothered? I'm out for fight. I'll make a shank. Well, you don't want to be making a shank, do you? If you want to see your son and. 
Pascaring. Need to get out Pascaring. as quick as you can, don't you? Like I've just said, I've passed caring, not care. Jail is where I want to be. Jail's where you want to be? Yeah. yeah. For Julie, there are dozens of other live cases that need her attention. For Helen, it's been a successful end to her time at Keithley. A little bit sad, really, leaving the uniform side of policing, leaving my team, but also, you know, looking forward to what's in the future. I'm unlikely to be out on the streets. Being able to chase down your most wanted or chase up the streets after drug dealers, stuff like that isn't going to happen anymore for me, so it's a little bit emotional. I will miss the team, so I just hope whoever replaces me gives them the care that they deserve. Congratulations. Thank so you very I'll much. Watch, I'll send confirmation to you on the email. As for now, you are independent. Good stuff, thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers. It was lovely having Josh signed off. We've done it. You've mothered and nursed him through his ten weeks, and then he just sort of cut those apron strings and watched them then really, really flourish. I think the absolute world of Laura, to be honest. Yay. Working with her has set me up, given me the skills that I need to go out on my own. Right, we'll get that paperwork so you can get your car. Laura's 100% changed what I thought a female cop would be like. Mm. I'm done with you. I don't want to darken my doorstep again. <laughs> <laughs> See ya. When you finish your set of six shifts, you're usually quite exhausted, particularly after last night shift. I'm going to be 50 soon. Could have retired already. It's just because I still feel young enough and able enough to still do my job, and I still want to do my job. It is a job like no other job, really. You see more in probably a few months than most people see in a lifetime. Well, it's freezing. Oh, oh no, it's a blanket on. You're Thank tired. You. Busy. Busy enough yeah. to keep us awake. Please, please, please! That's the one we're after. OK. All right, this time you're under arrest on suspicion of possession of class A drugs. I want to stand here, please. And then it comes straight through to my top window here. And what was the car that came in? He's got her hanging over a balcony. Oh, my God.